It's not even close to my signature. I know it's not the lieutenant governor who I met on many occasions. I think it's just an overzealous campaign worker, I hope. It's, it doesn't look good, and especially with my years on the Board of Elections, it's something that I'm not happy with. Sabina Matos' is very, very bad week. Top 10 News Conference this week with the Attorney General, State Police, and other authorities investigating allegedly phony signatures submitted on her behalf in her now embattled race for Congress. There isn't a penny available to implement any of it. As far as I'm concerned, that's not a plan. That's a wish list. And agencies don't operate on wish lists. And the king of the road, DOT Director Peter Alvini, is the new sheriff in town at Ripta, where he just took over as chairman of the board in what promises to be a rough ride in shaking up that beleaguered bus agency. Holding the powerful accountable from Washington, D.C. to right here in southern New England. This is 10 News Conference with Gene Valicente. I was quite surprised and I'm very disappointed I did not sign this. It's just disrespectful and the, they need to be prosecuted. Yeah, it, it was because if I did it, I'd be in trouble. She didn't sign that. That's not her letter. She don't write like that. It's not right. It's not right that people have been doing that, signing for other people. We just spotted her there, but where in the world is Sabina Matos? That's a legitimate question. As of this Friday morning taping, with the lieutenant governor turned congressional candidate ducking a face-to-face -face with reporters over the egg on her face over allegedly phony signatures submitted to get her on the ballot. The governor insisting he still has confidence in Matos, though one of her more than a dozen opponents says otherwise. Yeah, so uh, as far as um, the issues that are surrounding the uh, the Board of Elections right now, Secretary of State, there's a process going on, and uh, I expect that they're fully capable of, of uh, getting to the bottom of, of the details that uh, are important to get to the bottom of. Do you still have full confidence in her as Lieutenant Governor? Yes. And do you think she's the best candidate in this race for Congress? I've stayed out of the race. I have, I, I've, I've talked to many, many of the candidates and offered my office in terms of policy support uh, in the race, but uh, I, I, I don't intend to get into the uh, discussion. I'm going to move us along to another topic. Okay. Governor, I've got two for you. Holly McLaren, uh, she works for your campaign. Do you know her? I, I've been in a company and I do know who she is, yes. Do you know if she gathered signatures for you at any point? I, I'm not aware of that, but I, I, I think the majority of our signatures came because I was an endorsed candidate. So every every general officer went around and, and, and got signatures, and we had several thousand signatures. We're going to do one more. You should reach out to the campaign, though, if you have uh, Did you ask the lieutenant governor not to be here today, or was that her decision? No, I haven't talked to the lieutenant governor recently, when like in the, the last couple of days. Have you talked to her about this topic at no. all? Vintage Governor McKee. We'll get to him a little further in just a second. Also, we'll get to Holly, the woman at the center of this storm, for collecting those signatures. But first, here's Gabe Amo. He's running against Matos for Congress. We're on day five of our state uh, talking about the fraud that has permeated uh, the lieutenant governor's campaign. And we're now in a position where the attorney general and the state police are investigating this issue. As I've said from the beginning of this, I have been shocked by the silence uh, of the lieutenant governor, because at a time where there are active threats to democracy, we see them in the news, uh, where Republicans around the country are seeking to undermine the legitimacy of our elections, we here uh, have not heard from the lieutenant governor who should be reassuring Rhode Islanders uh, and holding uh, her people, her campaign staff uh, uh, accountable uh, to the decisions that were made uh, along the way that has led to investigations at so many levels. Look, I've worked for two presidents and a governor. I know when per public servants lead, they need to speak. Famously, you know, as Harry Truman said, the buck stops here. In this instance, I don't know where the buck is stopping. Rhode Islanders are demanding answers. I, as a voter here, am de demanding answers as well. Her campaign has issued statements that seek to move on past this issue. Uh, while they're under investigation with known allegations in at least three towns and a district-wide investigation being led by the AG. The last week of this campaign, 
for all of us, has been shrouded in confusion, in scandal, and hasn't been focused on the issues that Rhode Islanders actually care about. We are electing someone to the United States Congress. That is very serious. That is very serious. Yet we have been talking about signatures. And so this is a distraction. It is clearly a distraction. And that's why today I am asking that the Lieutenant Governor carefully consider the path forward for her campaign. Gabe Amo sensing an opening. Brian Crandall, our political reporter, just listened to that. You with the governor this morning. Is this uh, clearly it's damaging. Matos, the question is how much? Well, yeah, I mean, this has snowballed all week long. And as you heard from Gabe Amo there, I think some of her opponents would sure, sure. like her to drop out. I think that's what he was alluding to there, a path forward. I don't know if that's going to happen. As you said, as of this Friday morning taping, we have not heard from Lieutenant Governor right. Sabina Matos at all. We tried to find her yesterday. We've received several statements from her campaign. Um, sure, it's definitely damaging because as he put it, yeah. the, the buck stops at the top. So while, you know, the signature process, which not much of us probably talk about much at all, it's kind of, you know, as a candidate, you have to go around and collect so many signatures. Right. It was 500 in this race. Um, and you, other people usually do it for you. In some right. cases, you do it yourself. But you don't hear much about it. But there's an organization, and one election official in, in one city told me the Matos forms were just sloppy. Yep. And for a, a campaign that's supposed to be, she's all well, would think listen, is the leading candidate would, would know better. She's the candidate. Is she examining the forms? How closely is she examining the forms? How close is she scrutinizing the people she hired? There's a woman at the center of this, Holly McLaren, who popped up, as you know, in that the famous Governor McKee commercial, the Hey <laughs> Ashley. Where, she was in another one, too. Yeah, Holly right. McLaren was in two commercials for the governor. Yep. She worked for the governor. Now she's working for Sabina Mato. She went out and gathered those signatures. And at least from one dead person, that was the Jamestown case. And others are suspected of forgery. People said, I never saw Sign that. Right. In Newport, it was a, a Newport Housing Authority development yeah. where it, see, one person told me she did sign it, but then neighbors said, no, I didn't sign it. But they were all listed in a row. And then in East Providence, it was a different person uh, who apparently submitted the signatures on behalf of the Matos campaign. They're the one that had uh, all five yeah. city council members on there. And they, some of them said, yes, I did sign a paper for Matos, but that's not it. That's not my signature. Yep. One told us, no, I didn't sign at all. Um, but then the, Holly McLaren did submit papers in East Providence as well. Yep. One of them, they rejected every signature. <laughs> you know, 500 signatures is not a lot to get, particularly if you're a well-known candidate. Go spend a couple of weekends at the supermarket. You'll collect them eventually. But you're right. They delegate it out to other people. But other candidates will say, I delegate, but I, I, I check it. I look at it. Because I know this is coming back. By the way, you caught up with Governor McKee. We just heard from him. This is a busy Friday morning when we're taping. Uh, that was vintage Governor McKee. Well, well, now we'll let the process take its course. I still have confidence. And yeah, that's not me. That's her. Ba ba ba. Yeah, not throwing her under the bus, right. but not also, I mean, he said he had confidence in her as lieutenant governor. That was an event, we caught up with him at an event uh, on infrastructure that yeah. the congressional delegation was at, uh, the DOT director. Uh, my understanding is she was originally scheduled to be at that event. She was not. Uh, yep. And as you heard, I asked if, did the governor say, hey, please don't come? Or was that yep. just her uh, campaign or her saying, I'm not going to be there? For months and months, he would put out a, a release. I'm going to be here. I'll be joined by the lieutenant governor. We know they had a little falling out before the election, but they got back together. And he's, that was something he would have invited her to. Oh, in good, in good times, she would have been there yeah, right and beside again, him. And again, my understanding was she was supposed to be there. And you would think, you know, she's yep. running for Congress. She would want to be with the congressional delegation seen at an event yeah. to, you know, to give her credibility and standing is, you know, they usually don't turn away from cameras for something L like that. Listen, she's ducking us. And, uh, you know, on my radio, I had a list of people who got jammed up, but they came forward, beginning with Buddy Cianci, no stains on my jacket. Uh, Governor McKee, you famously asked him several times about the email scandal and the ILO investigation and Tony Silva mm -hmm. and all that stuff. All right, Brian, stay on the story. Thanks, In the meantime, Brian, I want you to listen to this. I caught up with Ashley Kalis, who lost to Governor McKee and who says she's not surprised by the Matos mess because Matos and McKee share some of the same campaign workers. Sort of poetic justice with Holly Wright. I yeah. mean, this is not Rhode Island, this sort of cheating and fraudulent behavior. It's really embarrassing. It's a continuation of the McKee Matos sort of uh, combination of just embarrassing Rhode Island through scandal. And, you know, here we go again. And it's unfortunate. You know, Sabina needs to pick up the phone and she needs to hold her team accountable. I understand that she was not collecting signatures herself, but that is the responsibility of the campaign. And if she wants to lead, 
she needs to lead and she needs to hold her campaign manager accountable because ultimately that is the person that is responsible for making sure that stuff like this doesn't happen. By the way, 500 signatures, not that hard to get. A couple of weekends outside the supermarket, you'll get 500. This is the sort of like sketchy behavior. This is this is McKee's political operation. And people need to be clear on that. These are the same people that work for McKee. So it's not me just linking them because I can. It's because it's the same people. It's not that hard. You don't need to cheat in order to get on the ballot. It's not fair. It's embarrassing. And it's completely unnecessary. So ultimately, she's responsible. But part of being responsible is holding the correct people accountable and not just saying, oh, it was a campaign worker and really picking on, you know, the lowest person on the totem pole. That's not what leadership is. She's now running for another position that requires leadership and responsibility and making hard decisions. And ultimately, while it's hard to hold your campaign accountable, you need to do that versus hiding behind your campaign. Now, you out of the box, you link Governor McKee to her. Those two were joined at the hip until they had a little bit of a falling out just before the election, but he still brings her around on occasion. Now, if, if McKee, what if the governor says, it's got nothing to do with me? Nobody's questioning my signatures. I mean, it, what would you say? Well, we haven't looked back at the signatures. Was Holly involved? I don't know. The other part about it is that, let's be really clear, it was his campaign manager that is now managing her campaign. So to not link them, I mean, it's the same people. This is like the Rhode Island shuffle, right? Which is that it's the same people on a different campaign you know, doing the same sort of, you know, stuff. So ultimately it's up to Sabina. It is her campaign and she should hold, you know, people accountable. And unfortunately in a political organization, that means that she's going to have to hold, uh, you know, somebody like her campaign manager accountable for doing that. That is the person that is in charge. Yes, ultimately she would look through them, but a campaign manager makes sure that you get ballot access. I know this is inside baseball. She needs to show that she can lead and be a credible candidate. Hiding and hoping this will blow over is is disrespectful to the entire process and to the other candidates who did work and get signatures to get on the ballot. That's it's just unacceptable. Republican Ashley Kalos who lost to Governor McKee.